One of the limitations of gear reviews of ultralight gear is that they'll focus on a particular feature that an ultralight product doesn't have and then compare it to a more conventional weight product that does have that feature and then they call that a limitation of the ultralight product. However, this ignores the design and the use case context for the ultralight product. So although it may be an inherent limitation of that style of product, it's not necessarily a uh, fair criticism of a particular piece of gear. For example, one can look at the lack of a floor in a Gossamer Gear Whisper, compare it, compare it to a more conventional tent that has a floor, and say this is one of the disadvantages of this product. So in this gear review, it's going to be a little bit different. I want to provide you with some education about the style of this kind of shelter and what its best use cases are. And then we'll talk about how the Gossamer Gear Whisper executes this style. Number two, what sort of performance we can actually get out of the Gossamer Gear Whisper's 10 ounce weight. And number three, take a look at what I think are the unique use cases for the Gossamer Gear Whisper. Let's go ahead and start with a tour. The Gossamer Gear Whisper is a floorless shelter. Now, if we think about the market of floorless shelters, there's two main categories. There are full perimeter shelters like pyramids and other pseudo tents. And there are um, shelters that don't have a full perimeter and those are, of course, tarps. What makes the Gossamer Gear unique in the context of floorless shelters is that it does use two poles to pitch and there is a netting perimeter all the way around for insect protection. Okay, now we're taking a head-on look at the tent. I just want to show you the geometry here. So this is the ridge line straight up and it goes straight back. You can't see the back of the ridge line. And you can see that the left-hand side of the tent here is larger than the right-hand side. And so this left-hand side is mainly the living area on the side of the tall pole. And the right-hand side is our so-called vestibule area. And this will make more sense as we go inside and explore the interior. So down on this end of the tent, we have the toe end. And if we slide that back a little bit, you can see that we have a, an accessory pole in there that's pitching this end. You can use a short trekking pole or short section of your trekking pole to do that as well. There is a little tie loop here to secure the tent to the uh, pole. And then you can see the netting skirt right there. And then there's a netting vent under here that'll be easier to show on the inside of the tent. The Gossamer Gear uses one millimeter SpectraCore guy lines and line locks to secure the shelter to the ground with seven stakes. So there are seven guy line points. The rear ridge line uses a line lock. The front ridge line uses a line lock and the door uses a line lock. All of the other uh, guy lines, the other four, are just fixed guy lines about a foot long between loops in the um, corner of the shelter and your stakeout point. Access to the shelter is through a single YKK number no. five zipper, and the zipper terminates at the bottom of the netting. It is a self separating zipper, so if you wanted to, you could just grab one edge of the netting and the zipper will come undone. You don't need to operate the actual zipper pull. And then if we pull it up, the door can be rolled away and secured with a conventional loop and toggle here. So two things of note on the inside, you can see down there the mesh netting skirt is quite a bit taller. In other words, the edge of the shelter is quite a bit more above the ground than along the back side of the tent where the mesh is rising about eight inches or so from the ground surface. And then in the back, there's our assembly for the rear panel. It's a vertical panel, consists of a vent at the top a panel of Dyneema composite fabrics in the middle, and then of course the, med the mesh netting skirt at the bottom. And you can see that the pole there is on the outside of the tent, where the main pole here is on the inside of the tent. There's a grommet up here, 
and a plain tip down here. So if you're using trekking poles, you would pitch this handle down and tip up that fits into a grommet hole. Okay, let's run through the standard configuration for pitching the Gossamer Gear Whisper. This tent is built around Gossamer Gear's own trekking poles. These are the Gossamer Gear LT5s. They extend to a maximum height of 130 centimeters. Lo and behold, that's the maximum height of the Gossamer Gear Whisper Shelter. So it's not a hard stretch to say that this pole governed the design of the shelter. And you can see this at the tail end as well because the collapse length of the Gossamer Gear LT5 is 23 inches and that's the pitch height of the rear of the Whisper. So let's go ahead and we'll use the LT5s to pitch the shelter in its standard configuration. I have them preset already to 130 and fully collapsed to 23 inches. The easiest way to do this is to pitch the two rear corners first and you can use fairly light stakes for, the, for these two stakeout points. They don't take or require a lot of stake tension. And then we can grab the short pole and insert it handle up into the pole pocket at the rear of the tent. And then we can take one of our longer stakes and pitch the rear. And this one will take a bit of stake tension, so I like to use a stake that's a bit stronger here. And then we can take another strong stake to the front ridge line. And this is where we insert the second trekking pole. This time, tip goes into a grommet at the pole cap. So make sure that tip gets situated into the grommet so that you're not poking through the fabric with the pole. So set the pole vertically, pull that ridge line tight, and make sure it's in line with the guy line, and then grab the front ridge line guy line and another one of your strong stakes and pull it nice and tight. And then we're going to do the two front corners. One of which is the door. And then finish off with the final corner. Okay, and you can see that the tin is in pretty good shape as it is. It's a little bit loose right here. So I'm gonna restake that, except there's a rock right there. And then snug up the ridge line, guy line, until these pull caps are nice and stable. Okay, and that's how easy it is to pitch. It's really one of the easier shelters that has a multi-panel geometry like this that is easy to pitch. And what you get out of the standard pole height of 130 centimeters and 23 inches is a lot of ventilation in the front of the tent here. So let's go ahead and unzip it, take a look inside. pull the door back. So you got a couple options once you're inside. You can leave the pole straight up and down. This gives you the best stability. Or you can move the pole a few inches towards the vestibule, so-called vestibule space. And this gives you more livable room in the sleeping area and allows you to sleep or move your sleeping pad closer to the pole so that you're not brushing against this back wall here. So you can see the netting that goes all the way around the tent. And by the time you add a ground cloth here, it uh, is very secure and is effectively a well-sealed floor. You can use the polycryo standard width ground cloth and or an aftermarket DCF or Tyvek ground cloth if you like. One of the things I really like about this netting perimeter is that there are little loops in each of the corners and seams of the netting. So you can actually, if you carry some ultralight stakes that are in the range of like five grams a piece, you can actually stake that netting down and have it stay in place. And then 
not have to worry about the overlap between the netting and your ground cloth. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like with the ground cloth inside it and a full-size sleeping pad. So this is a standard width polycryo ground cloth. And as you can see, there is several inches, probably eight to 10 inches of overlay between the ground cloth and the netting. And then you can use the pole over the ground cloth to get everything fixed in place. When using a floorless tent, make sure your ground cloth goes over the netting edge. And why that is, is because if rain comes down and then you start getting water coming under your tent, it will go underneath the netting and the ground cloth instead of on top of your ground cloth. If the netting is over the ground cloth and you start getting rain splash into the netting, that rain will wick into the tent and land on your ground cloth. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Okay, let's see what this looks like with a 25 by 72 inch sleeping pad in the tent. Now, I'm not tall, so I have a lot of headroom up here and I have a lot of usable headspace in here. Uh, the tent is wide at the end. It's, I think it's 26 inches wide at the very tail end. And then you've got another 28 inches or so right here. So there's plenty of room for a wide sleeping pad. You could probably fit a 30 inch wide sleeping pad in here pretty easily. This is a 72 inch sleeping pad. So if you're a tall person and that sleeping pad is all the way down to the end of the tent, the long pad is gonna go out to about here, 78 inches. And again, that's gonna give you plenty of room. It's got plenty of room for a tall, wide pad. When pitching the Whisper in stormy conditions, we need to get a little bit creative, but there is a way to do it so that you can have one side of the tent, in this case, the back side, be pointed in the windward direction. And the idea here is because the Whisper has a full mesh perimeter on the outside, that if wind is blowing against the back of the tent, it's gonna blow under the tent. Now, normally that's a good thing because it helps mitigate condensation. But if you need to sleep warmer and you wanna block the wind on the backside, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Now, right now the Whisper is pitched with the stock poles, which is a 130 centimeter pole in the uh, main section and a 23 inch pole in the rear section. Sorry for confusing metric and um, SI or uh, Imperial units there, but this is uh, kind of conventional as uh, we talk about the Whisper. So we're gonna replace the stock pole. I'm not normally bringing it on a trip. So I normally bring these 115 centimeter black diamond uh, distance running poles, but 115 centimeters is a little bit too small and it causes too much slack in the shelter. There's, there's not enough geometric flexibility here to pitch it tight with a 115 centimeter pole. So I found myself a rock in the forest that's probably 10 to eight centimeters thick. And so we'll use that to uh, prop up the additional length I need to drop the shelter height a little bit so we can pitch the back directly to the ground. The other thing we're going to do is replace the rear pole with something short. Now, if you're using the LT5 poles, you can collapse them and take the top pole section off and it's about 19 inches. And that's about the ideal height for the rear to pitch the whisper in a storm mode. So what I've done is found a stick in the forest that is about 19 inches long. And I used some other things in my pack to kind of gauge the length. So as long as you get in that 18, uh, 18, 19, 20 inch range, you'll be pretty dialed in. So let's go ahead and remove the rear pole first. We'll cause the guy, guy line tension to go slack. And then that's gonna go into the pole cap right here. Wanna make sure that stick sets in the pole cap and not on the fabric so that uh, you don't poke through the fabric. Okay, and let's unzip and we'll go ahead and replace the main pole, again, which is 130 centimeters. And 
with our short trekking pole that's then propped up on this rock. Okay, now this gives you the shelter height that you need to come around to the back side and we're going to take three of the corners and pitch them directly to the ground. We're going to start over here with the rear corner. Okay, so we're going to insert the tent stake through the other loop in the guideline and pitch this corner directly to the ground. We're going to do the same with this corner. And the same with this corner. And then we'll go around and snug up the guy lines. And we won't forget the rear one either. Okay, so that actually gives us a pretty tight pitch. There's a little bit of slack here in the ridge line, and that's just because you have one, two, three, four seams joining here at a geometry for which it wasn't necessarily designed. We've got a pretty tight floor perimeter on this part of the shelter, so that gives us the ability to have some wind protection for wind that is blowing into the shelter that way. Now the disadvantage here is that we have lost a little bit of height and width and thus we've lost some interior volume. But how much really have we lost? Let's check it out. So I am not tall, 5'7 or so, and I can still crouch inside the tent okay. And if I'm sitting, I still have well over eight inches there. So if I'm sitting on my three inch sleeping pad, I have plenty of room. It might be a little bit tighter for taller hikers. This is the wall that's the most problematic in this pitch. So this is the one where you're more likely to brush up against it because we've effectively brought this wall in and decreased the size of the sleeping area a bit. We can accommodate that a little bit by moving our handle of our trekking pole outwards and that either requires some tightening of the tent or a taller rock to make sure that the tent is pitched tight. Okay so there's the storm pitch for the Gossamer Gear Whisper with the back of the tent into the wind. All right let's walk through my general commentary on the shelter overall. First let's talk about the tent package. So the Gossamer Gear Whisper canopy with the netting attached and the guy lines attached weighs about 10 ounces, just a shade under. You still need seven stakes with the tent. So no more, no less. There's no additional stake out points for stormy conditions and there's no way to pitch it with less stakes. So count on a stake package that includes seven stakes. Three of those stakes need to be fairly robust. And those stakes are going to be at the ends of the ridge line and the door. These are the three stake out points that take the most tension. So this is where you'd want something like MSR groundhogs or nine inch tubular aluminum stakes so that you can really crank guy line tension down. The rest of the stakes can be pretty light. Second, you need a ground cloth. Gossamer Gear recommends their own ground cloth, which is the polycryo ground cloth. And there's plenty of overlap with that ground cloth and the netting. The, the netting skirt is a really generous amount of netting so it allows you to lay down a ground cloth over the edges of the netting skirt and then you can stack gear around it to keep it secure in windy conditions and it gives you full floor coverage of the shelter and a good seal between the ground cloth and the netting. Okay let's talk about the poles. The tent is designed purposefully around the Gossamer Gear light trek trekking poles. Fully collapsed, those trekking poles are 23 inches or 58 centimeters long. That's the height of the rear of the tent. And so if you take a fully collapsed light trek pole and use that for the rear of the tent, that's the perfect height. 
The front pole is going to be pitched at around 130 centimeters. And a lot of us don't carry trekking poles that extend to 130 centimeters. I'm not very tall. My trekking poles are 115 centimeters. I use a fixed length pole. So neither of my poles are gonna work for either the front or rear of the tent. And so I'm going to use primarily the um, aftermarket poles that Gossamer Gear sells as an add-on for the Whisper. These are 7,000 series aluminum poles that are 23 inches for the back pole and 130 centimeters for the front pole. The disadvantage to using the stock poles is that they're not adjustable and so I don't have the ability to pitch the Whisper in a storm configuration which drops the front pole down to about 120 centimeters and the rear pole to less than 19 inches. Now if you don't use poles and you don't want the added weight of the 7000 series aluminum poles that Gossamer Gear sells, you can use sticks but have fun with that. It's, it's kind of annoying trying to find and cut the right sticks for your shelter. So if you're not using adjustable trekking poles to pitch the Whisper and you're going to use the 7000 series aluminum poles, that adds 5 ounces to your kit. A stake set is going to add two to three ounces and a ground cloth like the polycryo will add about two ounces. So when all is said and done, the package weight of a whisper with poles, stakes, and ground cloth, and then whatever stuff sacks you want to add to it, is going to run about 20 to 21 ounces. And so now you're up into the range of uh, the package weight of something like a Durston X Mid Pro 1. Uh, but the Durston X Mid Pro 1 requires trekking poles, but they don't have to be quite as long. So they might be a better option for people who use shorter poles. The other option, if you use fixed length short poles, is you could bring some kind of carbon fiber strut for the rear of the, of the Whisper and either an aftermarket carbon fiber pole for the front or a pole jack that can be used to extend your trekking pole to pitch the front of the whisper. And this is what I do in my situation because I use 115 centimeter trekking poles. I have a carbon fiber jack for the front, a carbon fiber strut for the rear, and that gives me a package weight of about 15 ounces. The other thing you can do at the rear of the tent if your uh, adjustable trekking poles do not collapse down short to 23 inches or less is just use one of your pole sections and take it apart and try to dial that into the right height for the rear of the Whisper. Okay, regardless of your pole configuration, your package weight it, with a ground cloth and a stake set is going to start somewhere in the neighborhood of 14 ounces and go up from there depending on the pole set and pole configuration that you use. Okay, let's walk through the six main performance situations that um, every tent user should consider. The first one, of course, is condensation. The Gossamer Gear Whisper has a small rear vent to allow cool, dry air to come into the shelter. Likewise, it has a tremendous amount of ventilation around the lower perimeter of the tent protected by the bug netting. Those are your only sources of ventilation when the shelter door is closed and you're in the tent. There's no peak vents or other ways to ventilate the tent outside of opening the zipper door. So, when you're pitching the Gossamer Gear Whisper in high condensation probability situations, look for an exposed area that is, out of, is uh, exposed to the wind a little bit so that you can get some airflow through the shelter. In the absence of that, look for a place like this where you have tree canopy overhead, which is going to improve the radiation heat loss or the heat loss due to radiation from the shelter. And that's what I did at this particular campsite last night. We had temperatures in the 20s, gorgeous clear clear sky night and tons of dew falling everywhere frozen ground in the morning and i stayed um, above freezing and uh, fairly dry in the uh, trees last night but there's enough room in the tent that uh, someone like me who's not super tall can have plenty of room to change clothes and cook and do things without having to brush against the walls of the tent Taller people obviously will experience a tighter fit, but it should be manageable. This is a tall, long tent. So condensation management is not the Whisper's strong suit, but again, I don't think the use case for this tent is as a fringe season cold weather shelter. It's, a, it's an ultralight, 
summer, summer through hiking style shelter. In terms of rain performance, I have a few comments. The uh, mesh perimeter, especially the mesh perimeter on the door and front side where it's a little bit taller, is going to experience some rain splash if you get a heavy wind driven rain. Fortunately, unlike a, a tarp or a shelter that does not have a mesh skirt, you're going to get less because that mesh skirt is going to protect you from getting a lot of water entry. Just recognize that in a wind, riv wind driven rain, you will get some rain uh, bouncing through the netting of that mesh perimeter. The second thing is the mesh perimeter does a pretty good job of preventing wicking of rain that wets the top of the perimeter into the bottom of the tent. The reason for this is because the top of the mesh perimeter is sewn as a, a kind of inset into the lower edge of the fly. And so the lower edge of the fly provides three quarters of an inch of canopy over the top of the mesh and allows water dripping down the canopy of the tent to fall onto the ground rather than wick into the mesh. The third thing in terms of getting in and out of the tent in the rain, the sleeping area, because it is on one side of the pole, is fairly protected from overhead rain. Now, this doesn't mean that you can open the door during a rain and enjoy a nice dry living area. That's not gonna happen. And the reason, because even if there's even the slightest breeze and rain is coming into the tent, unlike a conventional tent, there's no interior door separating the living area from the vestibule. And that interior door, even if it's mesh, goes a long way at preventing rain from coming into your living area. You don't have that option with the Whisper. So this is a tent where you're gonna unzip the door, get in, zip it back up, and that's your rain protection. But unlike many pyramid shelters, it does allow you to get in and out of the tent without rain soaking your uh, sleeping area. In terms of wind protection, you have some ability to create a bit of panel tension on this tent, but not a lot. And the reason is that you have some long guy lines at seven points all around the perimeter of the tent, and that is going to cause some shifting of the shape of the shelter in strong winds. You can combat this, as I showed in the setup video, by pitching the rear and front poles a little bit lower and pitching three specific stake points directly, three or four, three specific stake points directly to the ground, which improves its structural stability in high winds, as well as um, minimizes the amount of mesh skirting that's exposed to wind, so you'll stay a little warmer inside the shelter. The downsides to that obviously is that the shelter's lower and you're going to sacrifice some livability, and there's going to be less options for ventilation, but usually that's not an issue in strong winds. This is not a tent for the snow. If you're looking for a fringe season shelter that um, is, is for potentially frequent snowy conditions, this tent is not going to be um, ideal for that for a couple reasons. One, you've got a lot of panel surface area and fairly shallow angles, and so snow loading is going to be an issue. The more important re reason, which will be a whole lot more annoying to you, is that snow is going to stick to that mesh netting perimeter like you wouldn't believe. And so you're not only going to allow spin drift into the tent, that mesh netting perimeter is going to absorb a ton of snow and you're going to put that snow in your pack when it comes time to pack up. Where this tent shines in terms of inclement conditions is in buggy conditions. Now, there's two types of buggy conditions that you should consider. The first type is there's bugs all the time and you're spending a lot of time in the tent during the day and the evening and you're trying to find a safe haven out of the bugs. You can't do that so much during the day with the whisper because the door has to stay closed in order for it to stay protected from bugs. This can make it a little bit stuffy in warm temperatures and it obviously blocks your views. Where if you have a more conventional uh, hybrid tent that has a vestibule and living area separated by an interior door, you have some flexibility because you can open that door, enjoy views and ventilation, and still be protected from insects. So you don't have that in the Whisper. So the use case for the Whisper for bugs for me is when I need bug protection at night. So I don't really care about during the day because during the day I'm, I'm hiking or I'm in camp doing other things or I'm hiking all day and just going to sleep 
once I get into camp at night. And so in that case, all I need to do is zip up the tent or zip open the door, get in the tent, zip, close the door. And that's where I'm staying until morning. And then morning comes and I zip up, exit the tent, and I have no need to go in and out of the tent or need views or ventilation. And it's just a haven from bugs at night. And that's where I think the real strength of the Gossamer Gear Whisper is in the context of buggy conditions. If I know I'm having to spend extended periods of time during the day in buggy weather, I'm probably gonna bring a different shelter because I want the ability to open the exterior door so I can see outside, have a more psychologically positive experience by seeing views and to give me more ventilation in warmer weather. When I think about the ideal design philosophy or use case for the Whisper, I go back to the idea that this reflects minimalism. The Whisper has no floor. There's no interior door separating the living space from the so-called vestibule. There's no gear storage pockets. There's no hang loops. There's no magnetic closures. The guy line, uh, four of the seven guy lines are fixed. Only three of them have line locks. Uh, it's a really minimalist shelter. Now it's sizable and it affords some livability inside. It does have the feature of a bug netting interior, but what we're doing here is capitalizing on some key ultralight philosophies, which is don't include stuff you don't need and don't include stuff that's redundant. So it foregoes the floor with the idea that you can put a ground cloth in there instead, which is effectively your tent floor. Now the ground cloth being separable from the shelter does have some advantages in that it allows you to, in a really muddy campsite, allows you to stow the ground cloth separate from the tent. And that might be convenient for some people. I, I certainly find that to be a benefit, especially in um, areas where I have a bunch of condensation in the tent and I want to leave the tent up and I know I've got the ground cloth is soaking wet underneath. And so I can take the ground, ground cloth out, dry it separately from the tent rather than waiting for the canopy to dry and then flipping the tent over and waiting for the floor to dry. So I think that's a benefit to this style of tent. If you compare the Whisper to a tarp, so a tarp is not a full perimeter shelter and normally does not have a mesh netting skirt on it. Uh, the Gossamer Gear Whisper would be my choice if conditions were buggier or I needed more privacy. In comparison to a pyramid shelter, which normally doesn't have a mesh netting skirt, the Gossamer Gear Whisper is going to provide a nicer experience in buggy conditions. In addition, unlike a symmetrical pyramid, the asymmetrical design of the Whisper allows for kind of a pseudo separation between the living area and the vestibule area and the pole isn't coming straight down into your living area. So from purely a geometrical configuration, I think the Whisper is a more livable type of shelter than say a solo pyramid. Now the pyramid I use is the Locust Gear Khufu DCFB and Although the shelter pole does come right down the middle, it's a symmetrical shelter. It's also made with a little bit heavier fabric. And so it's much stronger for stormier conditions. And it's the shelter I use in the fringe season. That's a 10, that's a 10 ounce shelter. This is a 10 ounce shelter. The Khufu is far more storm resistant than the Whisper in terms of stability in high winds and its ability to resist snow loading. So that brings up the classic dilemma. Am I going to have two 10 out shelters in my quiver or not? I can't imagine myself giving up the Khufu, but I can see the Whisper replacing my normal fast packing shelter, which is a Z-Pax Hexamid pocket tarp with doors. The difference between these two tents is that my Z-Pax tent is not appropriate for buggy conditions because it has an open uh, skirt around uh, an open perimeter around the bottom of the shelter, even though it is a full perimeter shelter. It's it is three ounces lighter than the Whisper, which is the main reason I use it for my fast packing shelter. But the ability to have insect protection all night long with the Whisper makes it a very compelling option. And I also appreciate that for those three ounces, I'm also getting quite a bit more interior room. Now I have to weigh this against the whole pole configuration issue because my trekking poles, which are the 115 centimeter long black diamond distance trail running poles, 
they don't work with this without a pull jack in the front and they don't work with it at all in the back, which means I have to carry an additional carbon fiber strut. So there's lots of decision making that goes into um, how you configure these tents before I can say definitively, this is gonna replace my Hexamid. Now the way I've solved the bug situation with the Hexamid in the past is to take a breathable bivy sack with a netting, uh, mesh netting uh, face covering on it. But by then you've added enough weight that you're above the weight of this configuration and pushing close to the weight of something like a Durston X Mid Pro 1. And then again, as I mentioned before, if you look at more conventional ultralight tents like the Tarp Tent Eon or the Durston X Mid, you've got interior living spaces that are separate from the vestibules and exterior doors. So on those tents, you can open the exterior doors for views and ventilation and still remain protected from bugs with an interior mesh netting door. And you don't have that with the Gossamer Gear Whisperer. So again, this brings back my de desire to emphasize that the use case for the Whisper is uh, people who don't spend a lot of time in their tent during the day and who just need that bug protection at night, where views and ventilation are less critical than in the warmer con conditions of the day. All right, let's conclude by going back to our original three objectives in this, rule, in this review. Number one, what are the general strengths and limitations of this style of tent? And by style, I mean a shelter that has a full perimeter with a netting skirt around it. The general strengths are that it gives you more livability for less weight than just about any other design. In addition, that netting skirt gives you the ability to protect yourself from bugs when you're inside the tent and the tent is all buttoned up. The limitation to this, this design is that if you want views and ventilation, for example, if you're occupying the tent during buggy conditions during the daytime, you don't have the flexibility to open the door and remain protected. The second design feature that's unique to this style of tent is that the perimeter of the tent is not staked to the ground directly like in my pyramid tent. And so you've got seven guy lines and two poles and it's really difficult to get a lot of panel tension and a lot of ridge line tension or other seam tension on the shelter which limits its extensibility into very stormy or windy conditions. All right, number two, what performance do you actually get out of the 10 ounce weight of this tent? And I think for below the tree line use in the summer, it does absolutely everything you need it to do. Again, as long as you're not having to occupy the tent in high bug conditions where you need the ventilation of an open door. It is rainproof. It is wind resistant enough for forest camping. There's a lot of interior volume, which makes it a very livable tent to sit up in or change clothes in. You can even cook in it, but watch out because there's no peak venting available. And so carbon monoxide can build up in the upper uh, part of the tent where you're sitting up and breathing. So you don't have any um, ability to have carbon monoxide laden air exit a peak vent, which then would draw in fresh air from the tent. So if you're cooking from the comfort of your sleeping bag inside this tent, you're probably going to have to open that door at least part way and cook outside the shelter. Finally, what do I think is the perfect use case for this shelter. I think that use case is going to come for long distance backpacking where you're spending most of the day on the trail or in camp outside your tent and then spending only the nighttime hours inside the tent, especially in buggy conditions in the summers where you don't have to deal with a lot of stormy conditions, very high winds, or you're going above the tree line, stuff like that. To me, this is a one or two season summer below the tree line shelter. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this review and learned something not only about the Gossamer Gear Whisper, but the various contexts of when we might choose one style of tent over another. Happy trails, we'll see you next time. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you noticed, this video was free of advertisements. Our work on YouTube is supported by Backpacking Light members. So if you found value in this video or any of, our, any of our other channel content, please consider supporting us 
at backpackinglight.com slash membership. Thanks for watching.